As most of you know, independent front suspension or independent rear suspension vehicles, they don't usually perform as well as solid axle vehicles do off-road. That being said, aftermarkets usually market towards those with solid axles just because they know people are out there to buy those vehicles and then modify them more later. I know a lot less people modify a WK than you would see a JK or an XJ or vehicles like that that have solid axles. So finding good quality parts for something like this, which has independent front suspension, after you lift it is pretty hard. And there's a good company that I reached out to that makes high quality parts, but for a market like us that you'd see missing. So things like this, which is an outer tie rod, definitely comes in handy when you're trying to fix your alignment after you lift your vehicle. That's something that I've needed for some time now. I've had upper control arms from a company that helps compensate for the three inch lift I've had for about two years now, but I can definitely see the outside of my tires wearing a little bit quickly and the numbers after I get it aligned just aren't there. So I reached out to them to see what kind of solutions they have and they have a bunch. So um, I definitely recommend checking their website out to find the right product for you. And in this video, I'll be installing their outer tie rods designed for anywhere between a three inch and I believe a five inch lift. These are adjustable tie rods. They help you compensate from anywhere, like I said, a three inch to a five inch lift. They use heim joints and they're sealed, so they're maintenance free. They perform better off road and they help preserve the life of your, your steering rack, your other steering components, as well as your tires. They fix the angles between everything and they allow you to get a perfect alignment. So I'm gonna go ahead and install this. I'm just gonna quickly start by jacking up the vehicle, removing the wheel, and then I'll go from there. So the first order of business to get your old tie rod out is to take your rotor off. To do that, you need to take your caliper off. To do that, you need to take off your spacer if you have one, but you don't actually have to take your spacer off to take your caliper off, but you have to take all three of those off. It's pretty hard to see, but there's a bolt here and a bolt down there for the bracket. You can use a 13th, 16th inch uh, socket to get these out. Once you get the two bolts out from behind the caliper bracket, you're gonna wanna make sure you have something to support the caliper so it's not hanging by the brake line. So I just have an extra jack stand here that I'm gonna lean against the Jeep and that should do the trick. Now the wheel spacer and then your rotor. So right here we have a locking nut that basically tightens against the outer tie rod to make sure it doesn't come loose. The first thing we're gonna do is just break that. So we're gonna loosen it just a little bit, but we don't wanna lose place of where it is because that's what's gonna keep our general alignment before you go ahead and get an alignment after this. Using another 13 16 inch socket, we're gonna go ahead and remove this nut on the end of the outer tie rod. And if this doesn't come out easy, you can just put the nut back on a little bit. Tap it until it comes loose. Oh, and the old one's out. I just wanna stress again not to touch this locking nut. It's what's gonna keep our alignment in check temporarily until we go ahead and get an actual alignment. So when I broke this before, as in I loosened it, it kind of made it easier to loosen this without the need of a wrench or anything. But if you do need a wrench, there's two flat parts on either side of this tie rod that you can use a wrench on. I'm just going to take this off. And I wanna say I did use a penetrating oil the night before to kind of make sure everything did come off smoothly. So the first thing you'll notice when you get this is the heim joint on this is going to provide a lot more articulation than you would get out of a normal ball joint. The range of motion is just a lot greater than a standard ball joint and you can actually see that when you go ahead and articulate both the ball joint and the heim joint. This heim joint is sealed so you do not need to service it and it will be a very strong option and much more suited for those who are looking to get the most out of an independent front suspension setup where there's already a limited amount of travel. And this is also a steering correction kit, meaning that it does fix the angle of your tie rod. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna allow you to get your stock angles back after lifting your Jeep and it's gonna make achieving a proper alignment a lot easier, meaning you're gonna save money after you do this because you're not gonna be wearing out your tires any quicker than you would if you were you know, stock. Setting up your new Jeep Perf tie rods is really easy. The first thing you need to do is just make sure there's approximately 15 millimeters of thread showing between the start of the locking nut and where the, uh, the threads start. So I've gone ahead and done that. I've counted it on mine and assuming that things are the same, it's approximately eight threads showing. 
I'm not gonna go ahead and say that's a definite number for everyone's tie rods, but for me that's the case. That's approximately 15 mils, like I said, from the start of the threads, the start of the lock nut. We're gonna take the next piece. We're gonna start threading it on. And that's just about perfect for this because the orientation for the driver's side is gonna look like this. Arguably one of the most important parts of this install is making sure you get the decal location right. This is gonna go ahead and be in the front. So you're gonna go ahead and you take your decal, orient it perfectly like that, and press firmly. As mentioned, the orientation is gonna be like this for the driver's side. So the outer tie rod is going to connect to it just like this. And I wanted to make sure before I go ahead and shoot from a different angle that you get the idea that we have a straight line here and we wanna make sure that this is parallel with the lower control arm right there before we go ahead and start bolting it onto the inner tie rod because we can go ahead and tighten this while it's off and make sure that everything's lined up and perfect. All right, we're ready to go. Take your inner tie rod and just start turning the outer tie rod on it. Take your assembly, get the threads through and you can begin Installing the castle nut. I accidentally forgot to press record installing the cutter pin through the castle nut. That's something you don't want to skip. Just take needle nose pliers, push it through the hole in the bolt, and then spread the ends of the cutter pin around the castle nut, and that way it'll never come loose. We're just about ready to move forward and start putting everything back together and get on the road. But first, you want to make sure that everything is tightened back down to spec. So we have our inner tie rods locking nut here that locks against our outer tie rod, making sure the outer tie rod does not come loose, therefore setting off our alignment. We have our locking nut here, which locks against the heim joint, making sure that that doesn't come out of alignment. And you want to make sure that the castle nut down here is tightened down to spec before you go ahead and put the cotter pin in it, because once you put the cotter pin in, taking them out, they usually break. So uh, you want to make sure that's tightened. And then we can go ahead, start installing our rotors start installing our wheel spacers if you have them, and then calipers, wheels, and then we're all set to go. All right guys, we just finished the install. I just put the Jeep back together. The only thing left to do is an alignment. I do recommend that you check all of the locking nuts on this because there are a few. Uh, make sure everything's tight to spec before you go ahead and take it on the road. Then you definitely want to go ahead and take it to a shop where you can get an alignment. The point of this is to get your stock steering angles back and what you will do without getting an alignment is potentially have any toe in or toe out and you don't want any of that. It's going to ruin the life of your tires. Just the same if you had your stock tire runs. But I definitely recommend doing this. It takes about 30 or so minutes. It's super easy to do in your driveway if you have to. And the benefits are honestly definitely worth the cost. What you're going to get out of this is your stock steering angles. You're going to save money on your tires. They're not going to wear as fast. You're going to prolong the life of your steering rack. You're going to have a very beefy component that's going to last you the life of your vehicle. We have Heim joints, which articulate better, helping the IFS on something that, you know, doesn't really have the best travel as it is. And they look good. So I'm going to go clean up and then I'm going to go ahead and tomorrow I'm going to get an alignment for this thing. And Wally at Jeep Perf is definitely confident in his products and he told me to whip my Jeep after this, so that's exactly what we're gonna do. I'm going to take this thing on some trails, we're gonna work those tie rods and we're gonna see exactly what they can do and what they can hold up to.